Good evening, and welcome to Jumpers for Goalposts, the show that travels business class. <laughs> I'm Clive Graham, and where's my hot towel? <laughs> We're dressed like this to celebrate the fact that we've done a deal with our American counterparts, and we are now officially the biggest quiz in the world. <laughs> Take your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, David. Let's get on and meet our team captains, Mr. Ron Manager and Tommy Steen. <laughs> Ron, you old dinosaur, tell us about your team. Oh, well, you know, isn't it? I've been as obsessed with my next guest's derriere almost as long as she has. Oh. <laughs> She's written a best-selling book called Does Bridget Jones' Bum Look Big in This Book? <laughs> oh, yes. And she's constantly on telly telling us what life was like all those years ago in the 70s, 80s and 90s. <laughs> no offence, it's Arabella Weir. And my second guest used to work on the big breakfast. Mind you, who hasn't? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Her nickname on Gladiators was Russell Crowe. <laughs> She's an Olympic silver medalist, and she went on to invent the sport of swimming. Marvellous. <laughs> it's Sharon Davis. Thank you very much, Ron. Tommy, who are your guests? Well, Clive, my first guest is a footballer turned pundit. He's the tough-talking token Scott on Sky. That should have been my job, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> he takes the beautiful game and throws techno gimmicks at it to make it more complex. It's the man who makes a whooshing noise. <laughs> Andy <laughs> Gale! <laughs> my second guest oh my is a TV legend and now makes his living treading the boards. In the last century, he was forever tumbling <laughs> over cars with another man who wore a cardigan. <laughs> His name was Starsky or Hutch, I can't remember which. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to David yeah. Soule. Yeah. Well, could I get you to sign these, please? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's for Mrs. Manager. She's a big fan. Mm. What if I don't? Oh, please. It's, it's for Joan. She's my wife of 30... Thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's for me, really. Put it on. <laughs> but, but there's something unmanly, isn't there, about a man asking another man no, for his autograph? I don't think so. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to interfere with you in the showers. I just want the autograph. <laughs> okay, Ron, sit down, please. We've got a quiz to play in our first round. It's called Hairy Monsters. I'll be asking the teams to identify a well-known footballer or celebrity with their face removed and only their hair remaining. OK, Ron, here's your first hairy monster. <laughs> Who might this be? Stuart... Um... No, calm down and ask me first. You're a lady, <laughs> I'm a man, I know football, you know football. <laughs> well, ding the bell. Right? Um... Who is it? Michael Owen. Let's have a look and see if you're right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> OK, Tommy, here's your first hairy monster. I recognise a ball. That is a definite quiff. Right. I'd say that is Go Dennis Bergkamp. You are top man, that's exactly right. Don't yes. unveil it, yeah. we know it's right. Carry on, next question. <laughs> oh, it must be terrifying for Richard Keyes with you around. Let's bro. check it, <laughs> You dominate that show, don't you? Mm? Let's have a look and see if you're right, please. There it is. Uh, mm. <laughs> Ron's team, who's the second hairy monster? Two monsters there. David Icke and his wife? <laughs> <laughs> you're straight in with that one. I've absolutely no idea. They're, they're nothing to do with association football. I wouldn't allow them to be in the same bed together. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the shower. No, we have absolutely no idea. OK, I'll throw it over to Tommy's team. What do you think, Andy? The one on the right with the big ball... Yes. <laughs> ..is Tony Curry. And the one on the left... I don't understand why he'd be in bed with him. ..might be a lad called Mickey Pedrick. That's my name. Mike Pedrick? Mike yeah. Pedrick? Yeah. Big Mike, but let's have a look and see if you're right. It's a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> So close. <laughs> 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 well, we you yeah. get one point there for Tony Curry. <laughs> 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 That's close. Give him one oh, point for the was Give him one either, point for the Bruce bullshit. <laughs> Tommy, here's your hairy monster. Who's that then? That is, um, while well, holding you? these two trophies, was arguably the greatest centre forward <laughs> of his time. It was in 1976. Right. <laughs> he hadn't been for a haircut that day. Well, who is it, though? He was asked to pose and he... It's me. Is it you? Yeah. Let's have a look and see if you're right. Oh. 
All right, MBU now. Ronchester right. City are on two, oh. and Astine Villa are on four. Yeah. Yeah. Andy, were you, um, were you sidelining for uh, Bay City Rollers at the time? <laughs> the that was, was Les McEwen's hairdo, wasn't that? Hey, the Bay City Rollers were it then. They were fantastic. They oh. still are now, as far as I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> what about Richard Keyes, Andy? Would you call him a hairy monster? Oh, oh you know, when his back's turned. He's the only man I know who has a body hairdresser. Yes. I was going to say, especially when he's backstage. I mean, what? A pelt. I bet it's like a cup. <laughs> Thank you for that. It's time now for the film round. We've been back to school. Not literally. That would be horrible. Oh. Oh, you know, school. Mm, school dinners, isn't it? Not cabbage again. Oh. Exams. <laughs> Mummy, I haven't done any revision, isn't it? Wasn't it? And the big boys in the fourth year are going to steal my dinner money. <laughs> exactly, Ron. <laughs> The memories are sometimes too painful to bear. This overconfident, bloated fool you see before you now was once a small boy in the showers, his hands clasped <laughs> firmly in front of him, desperately trying to conceal his lack of pubic hair. <laughs> My father made me wear short trousers to school till I was 16. My legs were slapped till they bled every day. <laughs> Still, it doesn't matter now, cos we're all coining it. <laughs> Our camera people have been back to the schools of two premiership players. Who are these teachers talking about? Ron, you first. Which player are they talking about? When he was at school, he was in East House, but now he's gone in the opposite direction. He was always a very talented lad. I can remember taking him to Wellingborough Six Society Side competition at uh, age eight, and it was obvious then he was going to make the grade. His father used to come along occasionally to watch. He was a well-known figure, but he used to hide away so that nobody could spot him. He was always going to be a footballer. He tried rugby once. He got hammered. We taught him many social skills, and he lives up to the school motto of virtue, learning, and manners. He was very able academically and could have easily moved on to the sixth form and then would have progressed to university. And as a Tottenham shareholder, I wish he had. Posh school, right? Mm. Rugger. Yep. Tottenham shareholder, no teachers at my school were shareholders, <laughs> that's for sure, in a football club. Very but uh, we have an idea, Fo football father, perhaps? Mm, is it Frank Lampard? Let's have a look and see if you're right. Have you guessed it? It's Frank Lampard, Jr. Well done. Good to see you. <laughs> OK, Tommy's team, who are they talking about? He looked good in a cap even then. All the Cubs tried to win badges, but he got nothing for years, and then he got three all at once. He got a bobber job then, but rather a lot more now. Even though he's getting on a bit, the Cub Scouts knew he was their man. After consulting with my captain right. on my right, and getting confirmation from David on my yeah. far right, <laughs> <laughs> David we to the think far right it, might, the it might be um, Teddy Sheringham. Teddy Sheringham, let's have a look. Did you guess it? It's Teddy Sheringham. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Dib, 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 dob, dob, dob. Dob, dob, dob. Dib, dib, dib. We will do our best. Mm. Clive, <laughs> can I ask a question? Yes. One of my favourite players when I was young right. was a lad called Ron Player. Is he any relation to him? <laughs> oh, you little minx, you know it's me, and I dropped the player in 1972, didn't Did I? When I became a manager, oh, yes. Sorry. I was wrong player manager for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> dropped the player and became wrong manager. Oh, right, Thank you very much. Now. Good spot then. I, I, I asked the question. <laughs> and weren't it... you in the Bay City Rollers? <laughs> <laughs> well, end of that round in second place with four points, it's <laughs> Ronchester City, but <laughs> leaping into the lead with six points, it's Ashton Villa. Oh. All right. All right. Yeah. OK, it's the part of the show that I've come to loathe. It's time for Ron's top tip. Ooh. Get on with it, Ron. <laughs> OK, ha <laughs> ha. You know, isn't it? Mm? You've got the ball. You're on offence. You're down by six. It's third down and two at the opposition's 25 with 30 seconds on the clock. Your running back is fit, but the defence have a top-rated linebacker and he hits the hole like a train! Isn't it? Wasn't it? Hmm? <laughs> Moreover, <laughs> your blocking halfback is carrying a shoulder fracture and the D already stuffed a misdirection play in the first quarter, didn't they? <gasps> Simply fake the run, isn't it? You know, roll it out to the right and hit your wide receiver in the secondary. Catch freeze! 
I mean, touchdown! <laughs> so there you have it. This week's tip, the designed rollout. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ron, you may as well be speaking Urdu. <laughs> now, just before the break, I've got a couple of half-time scores from some other quizzes on Give Us a Clue. Lionel Blair has brought the house down with his mime of Titanic. <laughs> going down. And on Blockbusters, instead of saying, can I have a pee, please, Bob, it's can I have a pee, please, Lisa? And the audience are still laughing. <laughs> See you in a minute. Welcome back. I'm Clive Graham, and this is Jumpers for Goalpost, the quiz that kicks butt. <laughs> and for those of you into pointless and ludicrous gimmicks, Andy <laughs> is available on the quiz cam throughout the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Press your red buttons now. <laughs> We're kicking off the second half. <laughs> <laughs> We're kicking off the second half of the show with <laughs> Tommy C. <Sick. laughs> Hello. If you're out riding, particularly in a military situation, oh, God. on Arctic <laughs> tundra or in any sub-zero temperatures, and you become separated from the main party at night as the night falls, simply dismount the animal and kill it with your hunting knife. <laughs> Slit open the belly and spend the night inside the horse, <laughs> thus avoiding death from hypothermia. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that's a brilliant time. Good <laughs> God almighty, Tommy. Haven't you ever heard of mobile phones or hotel rooms? You're a barbaric throwback. One day, Sonny, like people like you will need men like me. <laughs> Can I say that, uh, on the odd occasion, I've had to do that to Mrs. Manager and it saved my life. <laughs> Right, I'm bored with football. I know you are too, so let's have a bored with football round. There are three categories you can choose from. Pop, books and football. Managers, <laughs> this is for our guests only, so take a break. <laughs> right, uh, Ms Weir, uh, can you give me a category, please? Books. How many stitches protrude from an American football? Um, eight. Eight is correct! <laughs> she wants to count them. <laughs> <laughs> she watched you count them, yeah. Sharon, would you please choose a category? Pop, please. Time. Love isn't always on time. Which country <laughs> did American football come from? Which <laughs> <laughs> country do you remember? Um, America. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to Tommy's team and the men. Mr uh, Andy Gray, your category, please. Uh, books for me, please, as well. How many points do you get for a safety? You get two points for a safety. Correct! <laughs> OK, then, young man, can I have a category? Pop, books or football? I'll take all three. <laughs> no, I'll take football. Which part of your cooker should you use to grill fish? <laughs> Feel free to answer that. I will. I will. Uh, the um, the cooking part. I'll be more specific there, please. Which part? <laughs> I think there's a the clue in the word grill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't give it away. Oh. It's not as easy as you think, guys. <laughs> it's tough at the top. It's tough at the bottom, and it's tough in the middle. Well, it's it's the it's the it's the part that cooks. I'm sorry, it's the grill. <laughs> <laughs> I got it wrong. Yeah, I'm yeah. afraid you did, yes. There you go. <laughs> but I always grill my fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't tonight, I'm afraid. <laughs> OK. <laughs> At the end of that crazy round, <laughs> the scores are Rochester City have got six oh, points, but in the lead days. by one point, it's <laughs> Astine Villa with seven. <laughs> What's all this meant about being bored with football? <laughs> if football was a woman, I'd marry and fill her full of arms and legs. Right, right, Tommy. But make sure you get a prenup and a decent lawyer to look over it. Take a look at this. <laughs> that, wasn't yeah. <laughs> that wasn't football. That was a bunch of glove-wearing Nancy boys. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> 
<laughs> what do you reckon? I'm with you, Tommy. Cheers. <laughs> David? Yeah? Our researcher, Tabitha, tells me that you once worked with John Gilbert. I did. Uh, what was that about, then? It was a film called The Point With Death, and, uh... I didn't enjoy the film very much, but sitting around with Lauren Bacall and uh, Sir John Gielgud for hours and hours, listening right. to them tell stories was... Fair was enough, like only a... she told me that you cleaned out his garage. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> OK, fine. <laughs> we'll move on. It's time to go down the training ground. We've got a, a mock-up of a typical urban street. Obviously, it's not a real street. Uh, there's no room for all the brand-new coffee shops selling overpriced pseudo-American cack to gullible tossers <laughs> with more money than sense. I mean, come on, two quid for a cup of coffee? It's a diabolical liberty. <laughs> Something for the politicians to think about there. We're not afraid to confront the big issues of the day on Jubbles for Goalposts, the biggest quiz in the world. <laughs> Just over there is a board containing an anagram of a top premiership player. Ron, your team first. So, Ron. Am I getting up there? Yes, please, my dear. Get right up there. Go on. <laughs> there you are, Sharon. Rearrange the letters to form the name of a well-known premiership player. My dear. Sharon, your go? time starts now. <laughs> Oh, that's it. You've got it. Oh. <laughs> so I got an hour. Well done there, Sharon. <laughs> Two points for Ron's team. It's harder than it looks. OK, Tommy, who's up for your team? We're going to ask David to step up there. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on, David. Right OK, there. David. Come on, silver nice lady, job. take my hand. <laughs> in the end of wind and rain, comes <laughs> through me. Oh, sure. Lost down alone, chilled to the bone, <laughs> silver <Super> lady. <laughs> oh. <laughs> OK, Mr David Soul, your time starts now. Come on, David. Thank Richard Nixon. Well, I'm afraid he's right. Yeah, but they told well, it. Well, Garth Sal. <laughs> Move back for the septic, son. <laughs> That's too heavy. <laughs> Two no, points there. He's a writer, isn't he? <laughs> OK, in at that round, the scores are on eight points, Ronchester City, but leading by one, still Astine Villa with nine. Gareth! Yes! <laughs> OK, now, take a look at this public information film with Tommy Steen exercising a rare burst hey. of selfless public spiritedness. Hello. Are you ready for the change? Soon, we'll be losing our old pounds, shillings and pence and going decimal. That's right, <laughs> decimal. The whole system is going to get easier for us all because it will be decimal. Easy, eh? Couldn't be simpler. Decimal. <laughs> Say something costs two shillings and sixpence at the moment. Under the decimalization, that same product will cost only 13 pence halfpenny. <laughs> what a result! It'll be half price. In fact, everything will be half price. We'll all be quids in. Fantastic. Come on, you decimal! <laughs> I will. Those were the good old days, huh? I've got the hang of it now, you know. <laughs> I remember the old money, you know, isn't it? Pounds, shillings and pence, LSD, you know, oh, blotter, microdot, <laughs> Californian sunshine. <laughs> oh, I've watched the sunrise after looking at my hands for nine hours. <laughs> 1967, the summer of love. Where did it all go wrong? Well, for me, Ron, it was when I tried to combine LSD with refereeing in the old fourth division. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it was when they closed down the Golden Egg restaurant in Soggy Old Street. I remember it well. <laughs> oh, Sharon. Uh, Ron and I have got a special treat for you, Hen. Oh, <laughs> take a look at this. Swimming. Just do it. That was the public information film on behalf of the Swimming Advisory Board. 
So, what do you reckon, Sharon? Olympic potential there? A uh, nice pair of biceps. Perhaps we'd go out for dinner together, Sharon, and uh, <laughs> we've obviously got a lot in common, and uh, we'll split the bill, though. What do you reckon? Yeah, okay. I'm not going to pay for it unless you sleep with me, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. It's the quick far round. Let's get a move on because I'm touching cloth. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> what TV series was Neil Lennon reenacting when he ruptured his shoulder ligaments in training? Can't cook. Yes. Oh. Starsky and Hutch. Quite right. Yes. Come on, David. What was the only CSE Alan Shearer got? Uh, yes. Woodwork. No, it was oral English. We had him on it last week and I wouldn't have passed him. <laughs> <laughs> Middlesbrough's one million signing, Dean Windass, missed his debut against Newcastle due to injury. How did it happen? Uh, getting out of his car. A bit more than that. Re retrieving <laughs> someone from the boot of his car. Someone. His bag. <laughs> Sorry. What, his bag what are you saying? He's <laughs> a murderer? <laughs> <laughs> He was getting something out the boot of his car. Quite right. Chelsea's mascot is Stamper the Lion. What is his squad number? Uh, yes. 69. Nought. Rod Stewart was an apprentice with which London team? Chelsea, Brentford or Fulham? Brentford. Rob? Yes. Thank you. What pitch problem did Notts County face in mid-December? It was covered in fish, it had frozen solid, or it had started growing sprouts? Uh, it was yes. covered in fish. Quite right. Yeah, Tommy! <laughs> Oh, oh, it's all over. Oh, oh. Yeah, so at the end of the contest, Ronchester City have ten points, but the winners are Ashton Villa with eleven. Hey. Yeah. 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 There we have it. The winners are Tommy's team. Congratulations to them. But a big thank you to all our guests: Arabella Weir, Sharon Davis, Andy Gray, and David Soul. Nobody goes home peckish from JFG, so we're all going to have a hot dog each. Mmm, <laughs> coming at ya. Next week, our guests will be Pinocchio, Pocahontas, Pee Wee Herman, Point Percy at the Porcelain, Pepe Le Pew, Pythagoras and Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> Wish you were here. I'll say, I'll say, boy! <laughs> we will be. <laughs>